listening to the Agent Survival Guide podcast. A podcast for today's insurance agents. Informing. Educating. Empowering. Improving the way you do business in an industry that's anything but static. In today's episode, life insurance offers your clients peace of mind. But how much do they need to properly provide for their loved ones? Learn how agents determine that amount in Four Ways to Calculate Your Client's Life Insurance Needs, written by Lily Joins and Isabel Vitale. We all agree life insurance is important, but how much does your client really need? There are many ways to determine a client's life insurance needs, and we'll cover four. The multiple of income approach, the dime method, human life value approach, and a capital needs analysis. Each method serves its purpose, but the latter two methods are more sophisticated and allow you to address the specific needs and concerns of your client's survivors. Let's dive right into our list, starting with the multiple of income approach. This is the simplest method for estimating your client's life insurance needs. The goal of the multiple of income approach is to replace the primary breadwinner's salary for a predetermined number of years. Begin by multiplying the client's current annual income by how many years they want to provide financial support for their surviving loved ones. The recommendation is to have 7 to 10 years of life insurance. It's an easy method, but it doesn't take into account the specific needs of survivors, current assets, and existing funds such as the survivor's income and investments, or different types of family structures. For example, this method may work well for a family with one child, but might not work as well for a family with six children, especially if you want to send all six to college. It also does not take into account inflation or future salary increases. Using this approach may lead to over-insuring or under-insuring your clients, but it is a start that can give you a ballpark figure. The second approach is the DIME method. The DIME method takes more specifics into account than the multiple of income approach. DIME stands for Debt, Income, Mortgage, and Education. To calculate your client's needs using this method, add up their DIME. First up, debt. Include all your client's debt, except the mortgage. Include credit card debt and any student loans that aren't forgiven upon death. Second income. Use the multiple of income approach here. Multiply your client's income by the number of years they want to provide income replacement. Consider the ages of any children. Third, mortgage. Add the existing balance of your client's mortgage, if any, to the running total. Fourth and finally, education. Does your client have children? Factor in the cost of higher education, which can range across a broad spectrum. On average, it costs almost $100,000 to send a child to four years of college. Don't forget costs other than tuition, like room and board and textbooks. The DIME method gives you a more clear idea of your client's expenses and needs than simply multiplying income. However, it still doesn't consider specific circumstances of your client, namely existing financial resources. Stopping your calculations at dime might leave your client over, in short. Now that brings us to our third approach, the human life value approach. This method considers your client's age, gender, occupation, current and future earnings, and employee benefits. There are four steps to determining the overall value of the client if they were to pass away today. Step one, estimate the client's earnings from now until a set point in the future, 
typically their expected retirement age. Be sure to factor in future wage increases as well. Step two, subtract the insured's annual taxes and living expenses from the total. It's usually safe to assume 30% of their salary will go to taxes. Step three, select an assumed rate of return on the remaining total and subtract it from the gross amount. In other words, subtract the interest you expect the money to earn. Step four, add the cost of additional benefits provided through employment, such as health care, that will need to be replaced when the client dies. Remember to account for inflation. The primary goal of this method is to replace income lost. It doesn't necessarily account for funeral costs, children's educational expenses, or other specific future needs, but it does get a little closer at honing in on your client's unique situation. Finally, approach number four, capital needs analysis, the most widely used approach for estimating life insurance coverage. In addition to replacing the client's salary, it also accounts for other sources of income and assets and the specific needs of survivors. This method factors in current and future income of both the insured and surviving spouse. Immediate lump sum cash needs upon death, such as funeral expenses, debt repayment, and mortgage payoff. Future expenses, such as college, weddings, long-term care expenses, and retirement funding and existing family assets, retirement funds, or insurance policies. Once all future needs are taken into consideration, there are then two ways to calculate how much insurance the client needs based on how they want to utilize the funds in the future. The earnings only approach. In this situation, the survivors will live off only the investment earnings of the policy without cashing in the principal value. This method is preferable if the client wants funds to be available for their children after their spouse has also died. Like any investment, this method is subject to the risk of changing market interest rates. To provide a sufficient income stream, the death benefit is usually significantly higher than in the liquidation approach. In the liquidation approach, the surviving beneficiary utilizes a portion of the principal as well as the investment earnings. There is more risk with this approach, particularly if the investment earns less than originally predicted the surviving spouse may not have sufficient income to live on for the remainder of their life. No matter which method you choose to calculate your client's life insurance needs, it's always a good idea to have a baseline estimate of their survivor's future financial needs to ensure the policy will provide sufficient support. Getting a life insurance policy is the smartest thing your clients can do to show their family they care. To make things easier, you can download our PDF worksheet for calculating clients' life insurance needs. You can find that link as well as other helpful information in our episode notes. Want more advice and tips for selling life insurance? Here at Ritter Insurance Marketing, we are happy to help. You can reach out in a variety of ways. You can send us an email at asgpodcast at ritterim.com or leave us a message at 1-717-562-7211. The only wrong question is the one that isn't asked. Thank you so much for listening. We will see you next episode. The Agent Survival Guide podcast is a production of Ritter Insurance Marketing, an integrity company. This episode was written by Lily Joins and Isabel Vitali. Script adaptation by Tina Lamaru. Recording and production by me, Sarah Rupel. Podcast design by Urban Rivera. Artwork by Vivian Zhao. Follow along with our show wherever you like to listen.